whole question of uh, uh, was I your father, wasn't I? Um, it's, uh, becomes very sort of an unimportant part of the past, for me anyway, you know. I mean, I think it's much more important for you. For me, it's just one of those things that happens along with life. So don't feel sorry for me. If you have pity, it should be for Harry, who loved and lost Diane, and then missed out on the childhood of that Sarah that he'd produced. Had that been my lot, I would have been mortified when I read that DNA result. I've been a very lucky man, and of course, for one of my luckiest moments, I have to thank Harry Gulking for loving Diane. Sarah is only what she is because of that night of love between Diane and Harry. Had I been her biological father, she would have been entirely different. Well, she might have been better or worse, but she would definitely not have been the Sarah she is today. And that's the one I love. Of the other possible outcome, there's nothing. You may decide you want to keep this letter to yourself or to share it. It's yours and yours the choice. You know, look. Dad, can you just go back over that one line? I was being so real. <laughs> I completely convinced myself. <laughs> you may decide you want to keep this letter to yourself or to share it. It's yours and yours the choice. You know, look, while telling me your news on Thursday, you twice hugged me as hard as you ever did in your childhood. That alone made your revelation worth a thousand words. So, there you have it. All I know of what happened or what has been reported to me has been told. I think I wrote this story because it really says so many interesting things about the human condition. But maybe there was another reason. Perhaps deep inside I have suffered more of a shock than I would openly admit. I sometimes stop and realize that something inside has for the rest of my life changed. A certain cord that runs between Sarah and me has been severed and I'm powerless to join it together. It's not a real thing. It only exists because we have developed this facet called imagination and that is all too real and tangible. It gives pain. It's brief and soon I am back again at the keyboard reliving the past 40 years but I suppose it will always be lurking to catch me unawares. So perhaps this story is a form of denial. How ironic it is that the final revelation and its aftermath have brought Sarah and I closer together and resulted in me writing volumes as Diane always wanted me to. It has given me a new lease on life. At 5.26 this morning, a little girl was born to Jennifer, my son's wife. It's almost three quarters of a century since I was pulled out into the air of Ilford, and now this small girl is starting to learn about life in Toronto. One thing is certain, her life will be radically different from mine. So different that we might as well be born on planets light years apart. I think she'll be interested to read of her grandfather's life set down in a way that makes it very unlike the stuff of history books. And now there's a fly buzzing around me as I write. It'll buzz around for a short time looking for food, and once sustained, may seek a mate. It will never know why. It has simply been sentenced to follow the demands of millions of ancestors. For that fly, the word why does not exist. Yes, that's it, Michael. Just accept the sentence. I will go on. I will go on.